Hi, welcome to BCS Careers Inspiration. Today we're joined by Kate from John Lewis. Uh, Kate's a business analyst and she's going to speak to us today a little bit about what her job involves, how she got into it and some tips for people who might be interested in getting involved in business analysis themselves. So welcome Kate and thanks very much for joining us today. Um, if you could just kick off by telling us a bit about what you do in your job and what being a business analyst involves. So I'd say the great thing about being a business analyst is, is it varies so much. Um, every project and every day could be different. You might be doing some scoping and feasibility of a solution to an idea of a, to a problem and determining whether a package solution meets the requirement uh, that the business have. Uh, talking to senior business leaders about what they want to achieve and how IT solutions can help. Um, you could be running a workshop. You could be designing some new processes. You could be training some users. Uh, it really does vary, but I'd say the main tasks are trying to understand what the problem is that you're trying to solve in detail, helping the stakeholders to understand what it is that they need and, and where, where they need to get to in, in their thinking to, to decide that, gathering the requirements and documenting them clearly um, so that they can then be passed on to people who are actually going to create things, and then to help the project team to implement a solution. Um, so th there's quite a nice little um, analogy that I came across recently about a lawyer writing a will. So if you imagine a lawyer speaking to their client about a will, um, the client will explain to them what it is that they want to be in the will in kind of layman's terms. And um, the lawyer will then have to, to understand that in a bit more detail. They're going to have to ask lots of probing questions. They're going to have to make sure that their client understands when they say I like that I want this to happen do they understand the implications of that um, and then they need to record it in a way that it can't be misunderstood further down the line so that's kind of what a business analyst does. Mm, that's really helpful thank you I like that analogy. It's and, nice, um, isn't it? Yeah how, how did you get into this kind of role can you tell us a bit about your background and I guess like how you came to be where you are today? Uh, yeah, it was uh, completely by accident. Really. <laughs> um, I guess I've always been surrounded by IT to, in some form because that's what my dad did, but I never really wanted to work in IT. Um, I went to uni to do international business um, and studied abroad for a little while. Um, and then the year I was due to graduate, I saw um, an advert for a job in a software company for, for a business analyst. I didn't even know what that was at the time. Um, but the company looked interesting, so I applied, and they offered me a job, but as a developer, weirdly enough. Um, so I got trained in coding. I did that for a few years. Um, and then I moved into sort of a data arena, which that was a job that kind of involved working right the way through the software lifecycle. So I was gathering requirements, talking to users, documenting, uh, actually creating the stuff, installing it, and training. And I quite liked the bit that happened early on in the life cycle. So talking to people about what they were trying to achieve, helping them to understand their problem and, and work out how we could help. Um, so I then applied for a job at Waitrose as a business analyst. By that point, having a bit more of an idea what it was. Um, and I've been there for mm, 16 years now, doing lots of variations of that role. Um, some aspects are a bit more technical. Uh, sometimes I've done a bit more on um, the front end, kind of working out what the, the front of an application looks like. Sometimes I've done training. Um, so, yeah, quite varied, really. Yeah, it sounds really varied. It sounds like you've got the, the chance to get involved in quite a lot of different things since you've you've been yeah. there. And yeah, it would actually be really interesting, really interesting to hear about something that you've been working on recently. Is there a, a project or anything that you've been working on lately? Well, at the moment, I manage a team, so I don't work on a specific project. I just kind of dip in and out and help people as they need it, really. Um, but I think a particularly interesting one that I did work on a few years ago um, was quite a groundbreaking marketing initiative by Waitrose called Pick Your Own. Um, it's not around anymore, sadly, but at the time it was quite new and unusual. And it was one of those projects where someone at the top had decided that's what we wanted to do. And, and we were just going to do it. And there was a deadline set right at the beginning. And that's when it had to be done by. Um, and I think for us anyway, not for many companies, but within the partnership, that was quite an early example 
of working in a, an agile way. Mm. Um, we had a really good team who worked together. We had a good manager who who helped us and, and got rid of all the blockers so we could just get on with our roles. Um, but it involved working across quite a lot of different teams to make something happen. Because we were launching a new app, but we were also wanting to put it on the website, which was run by a different team. Um, it had finance implications and we needed product information. So all the different bits came from different teams. So we had to, we had to liaise across lots of different teams in order to make that happen. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it was really good and it was really, really different way of working for me than where I learned quite a lot. And it was very quick as well, which is which is quite unusual in the partnership thing. Yeah. And I think when you work with so many different people and, and you all kind of come together to make something happen, there is a real sense of kind of collective achievement when you pull something like that off, yeah. especially like you said, in a sort of a short time scale. So that's Absolutely. really good. Yeah. And um, what would you say is the most sort of exciting bits of your role? What do you love most about your job? Uh, that it is so variable I'd hate to be sat there doing the same thing day in and day out mm. but when I join a project team I, I never quite know how it's going to work out what I'm going to be doing I might I might be doing quite a technical role I might you know I've done um if I've been working on the on a website helped out with um updating some of the pages for like things like terms and conditions in JavaScript I don't really know any JavaScript but you get to go in and have a little play with it look up a few things and you probably can make that work. Uh, sometimes I get to be involved in uh, training people in how to use a new system, uh, writing a user manual for them, uh, doing sometimes doing some testing of a new system, see if it actually does what we think it should do. So that there's lots of different things. And at the moment, because I'm managing a team, I get to see what's going on in lots of different projects. Um, and I can say, well, actually, this team over here did something very similar, but but they did it like this. Could, could that help you? And, and that's great as well. And you can see people then developing as well as they learn different things because we're not, not so much working in silos if we, if we can help each other across a team, which is really nice. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And I guess because your work is very varied and you get involved in a lot of different things, you have quite um, a wide range of skills that you need to draw upon as well. Um, which skills would you say are the, the most exercised in your role? And do you have any advice on how people might go about developing them for themselves? Uh, so I would say as a business analyst, probably communication and people skills are very important. Mm. Most, most of what we do involves talking to people, uh, which, which is great fun, I think. <laughs> um, but it's quite important to be able to put other people at ease, to be able to listen to them and understand what it is that they're trying to tell you. So going back to the analogy with the lawyer, when they say one thing, you have to kind of probe a bit to all when you say that, do you mean this or do you mean that? And sometimes it can help to draw them a picture. If you can see something on a piece of paper, then then that that's quite useful. Um, but then there's lots of different diagrams that we use as business analysts, which, which sort of help people to visualise more what it is that they're asking for and what they might get. Mm. Um, and obviously the communication side of it is, is crucial not only do we need to be able to talk to people to tease out what it is that they they need and want from a new system or a process, um, but we need to understand what is the pro what is the problem that we're trying to fix in the first place. Um, are, are we getting that right? And and also then to be able to document that information in a way that uh, then our techies, the developers, can can take that away and create something that actually does fit the bill. Mm, absolutely. That's great. That's a really good, uh, a good overview of that. And then, um, as well as the skills kind of side that we talked about, um, we've spoken to um, quite a few people who are graduating or who are um, looking to enter the IT workforce. And actually, business analysis is something that's been quite popular. So do you have any sort of top tips or career advice for anyone um, graduating or maybe changing career and looking to enter the workforce? What would you say to them? Maybe um, something that you think, oh, I wish someone had told me that when I was starting out. Any sort of um, advice or guidance? Um, I think 
for me, it's quite important to remember that the experience that you bring to a role isn't just about what you've done previously in the workplace or in studying. It's about your your whole person. So you might have developed lots of skills doing other things, for example, organising a sports team or organising social events and just being a good listener and, and talking to people. You know, some, some people are naturally sought out by others to listen. And that's a really important skill as a business analyst. Um, solving problems, you know, have you solved a problem at home somewhere? Something has gone wrong and you've managed to fix that. They're all really important skills that, that you've developed. So, so think about what else you've learned outside of the workplace. And, and don't be afraid to try different things. The wide experience help, really helps you to find out what you enjoy the most. Although I thought I wanted to be a business analyst originally, I tried out lots of other things first um, to find out actually I, w- I was right in the first place, but that was okay because the things I learned along the route really helped me in my job now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really great advice. Those sort of transferable skills and experiences that you might have picked up elsewhere that are kind of valuable to lots of different areas is a really good, a really good tip. So that's great. Thank you. Thanks very much, Kate, for your time. I think it's been a really insightful and and helpful conversation. So I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Thanks very much.